now that, that is a plan. Okay, okay, this is actually my favorite plant. I grew it, I grew it from a seedling this size. And I liked it so much that I even went and found out what plant was used to breed and create it and bought it too. Given its dark foliage, dramatic size, and exotic look, it's no wonder that Anthurium papillolaminum is quite popular amongst indoor plant enthusiasts. But it has a little secret, and that is, it's really easy to grow. Given the right conditions, these or this species is much easier to grow than other plants with a similar look. And I recently discovered a secret about this species in nature that may explain what makes it easier to grow than other plants with a similar look. If you stay till the end, I will reveal it. Now, to the basic needs of this plant. This species does and will require a little more care than a basic house plant would, but with a few adjustments, this plant can be very easy to grow. So essentially it's going to need humidity in the 50 to 70% range, it's going to need good medium light for 18 hours a day. It's going to need well-balanced nutrition. It's going to need a good watering routine. And it's going to need a free draining potting mix. That's it. The first thing, humidity. It is important. These plants come from a tropical region. So it's going to want higher humidity than in most households. So you're going to need to supplement humidity with a humidifier. Um, I suggest AC Infinity and their CloudForge humidifiers. Um, they work really well, but any humidifier will work just as long as you can keep humidity above 50% all the time. Okay, nutrients. That's going to be important. So this is Kalite from Tazula Plants. It's a very well-balanced nutrient. I use this once a week as directed. Light. Light is the most important thing when it comes to growing this plant. It wants light and it wants it 18 hours a day at 250 to 500 foot candles. And if that sounds ridiculous, just for me, I keep it about two and a half feet away from my LED grow light for 18 hours a day. Or I would say one foot away from a north or east facing window for, you know, the duration of the sun. So next, let's talk about watering. This plant is going to need to be watered two to three times a week. If you're growing in higher humidity, two times a week will be fine. If you're growing in lower humidity, three times a week would be ideal. The potting mix that you plant this plant in is also going to be important. Said mix is going to ideally be very free draining. Whenever you water, you want to be able to almost immediately hear or see the water dripping out of the pot. This means that your potting mix is going to need to be very porous and able to drain quickly. Made of things like orchid bark, tree fern fiber, pumice, horticultural charcoal. I'll put a recipe in the link below. And just as an honorable mention, grow tents and grow cabinets are great, great ways to optimize the conditions for these plants. So, I promised a tip that I recently discovered while doing some research, and here it is. I was looking up the native habitat of this plant and found out that some scientists while doing research on cranes reported that the actual forest where this plant originates from is prone to a drier period for two to three months out of the year. And that drier period 
could very well be why this species does better than other species with a similar appearance does when grown indoors. It's more prone to put up with our torturous <laughs> ways of growing indoors where we can't provide ideal conditions. So thanks for checking this out. If you liked it, please subscribe and like and all that stuff because I really want to make more content like this.